Well, obviously we're not thrilled with the result, um, but our ex execution and our effort was fantastic. Um, all game long, just love this team, how they implemented a different um, strategy right from the beginning on a day and a half. Uh, in the locker room, coming out second half, still within striking distance. I know the numbers are really good for us. We just needed to make a couple more. Um, heck of an effort, heck of a team. So proud. Okay, we'll start with questions for the student athletes. If you raise your hand, if you have a question, we got uh, Pat Eaton Rob from the Associated Press. Um, Carly, the, the threes just weren't falling today. Was that a, a function of what they were doing on defense, or was it just a bad shooting night? And how much did that impact what you guys were trying to do today? Um, as Coach said, we tried a different offensive set today. We tried to slow it down a little bit. Um, so in the first half, you know, we were taking shots with 12, 10, under 10 seconds left on the shot clock. So they were a little bit more rushed, I guess, and maybe that led to um, us not hitting as many threes as we're used to. But um, I thought we played really hard. I don't think – I mean, obviously, they're the number one team in the nation. They're really long, athletic, so that – um, you know, hinders our offensive ability a little bit. But I think for the most part, we the shots that we did take were good shots. They just weren't falling for us tonight. <clears throat> Other questions for the student athletes from Quinnipiac uh, in the back? And, you know, Jen, you know, I don't have the final stat sheet in front of me, but you, you know, you led the team in points again today. You, you know, playing against South Carolina, playing against UConn today, how did those games help you in the regular season, you know, playing this tough, uh, these tough opponents? Um, I mean, I think we've been playing really good competition all year. Out of conference schedule was uh, pretty insane. Um, I mean, we didn't win a lot of those games. That was really tough ones. But, uh, I mean, the score, we only lost by, what, 25 tonight, and we lost to Ohio State by more than that. Um, I mean, I think we played a hell of a game, and uh, we gave a run for their money, I think. Eric Dilbrat's in the back. <clears throat> Carly, can you just talk a little bit about this ride that you've been on with your mom and just what an experience it's been for you for these four years? Yeah, it's been pretty incredible. Um, obviously, coming into my freshman year, we got to the NCAA tournament. Um, that was my first time, but the second time in program history. Um, we lost to Oklahoma out in California. Uh, my junior year, um, obviously last year, making it to the Sweet 16. And then this year, getting back, getting to that nine seed and ultimately losing to, you know, the number one team in the nation. So I just think it's been incredible that all the su success that the program has been seeing, I've been able to really be a contributor to that. Um, you know, my mom's been here for as long as I've been alive. So just seeing her having that um, success and actually, you know, contributing and being a part of it, it's been, it's been incredible. Right there. Right back here. Thank you. Hey, P. You know, you always talked about your national pride, the biggest stage against the biggest team today. What does it mean to represent Lafayette as a whole and especially on a stage like tonight? Um, I'm really proud to be Latvian and being the last one in the second round to represent my country is a um, big opportunity. And I always go out there uh, knowing that how people look at me, that's how they actually see Latvia because we are quite of a small country and not that many people come to United States to um, live, study, and let alone playing sports. So um, it's been a, quite a ride. Um, yeah. You guys used the word validation yesterday um, in talking about the first game. Do you feel like that first half today really uh, validated yourselves yet again? Absolutely. I think we held them to their season low of scoring in the first half. I think they were kind of frazzled a little bit um, with us, our defensive pressure. I think that's something that we're known for. But, you know, I think having that rematch against Miami, that was kind of a tough matchup just because we knew that they wanted a lot of payback. So, But we were confident in ourselves. I think a lot of outsiders would have thought that, oh, Quinnipiac can't do it again. They're a one-hit wonder kind of thing. But for us to get back and to beat Miami and then obviously to represent our program tonight in Connecticut against, you know, UConn, the best program in the last, you know, 20 years. So we're really proud of that. Paul, you're considered the, the anchor of the Stephens, for lack of a better term. You're going up against players that are much length, lengthier than you are, and you – Played pretty well as was said. Thirty as was said, thirty three points allowed in the first half. How were you able to contain the length of UConn for that first half as in the paint? Um, yeah, we had to work as a team to do that. Um, obviously, uh, we had our scout. We did. We knew how we're gonna play the posts and stuff. 
Um, and I just tried to do my best to contain uh, number 15, uh, Gabby, um, and to help off when I, when I had to be in a hole and stuff. And um, every every individual player you see on this team, it's actually um, a group effort, and no one play in offense or defense is actually made by one player. It's all, all together. We'll go with Rich, and then we'll go with Jeff. Obviously, you guys knew that their length was going to be a problem, but one of the things that you limited in the first half, I think you only had three turnovers, and they score so much off their defense, so you really limited that, but as much as you're trying to use up shot clock and, and hold their possessions down, they really seem to be to take away all your passing lanes, so everything seemed to be a struggle in your half court, in the, especially in the first half. Um, yeah, I mean, we don't really see that kind of length during the season a lot. Obviously, we played a lot of good teams in the non-conference, but, you know, they are quite large. But I think um, we that's something that we pride ourselves on at Quinnipiac is not turning the ball over, and everyone takes that pretty personally. So it wasn't a surprise to me that we weren't, weren't turning it over all that much um, throughout the entire game. But um, I think it was just our, our different offensive approach of – holding it and um, running down the shot clock, that kind of might have thrown us off a little bit with not being able to um, as seamlessly just get shots and passes off as normally as um, we normally do. Jeff, and then we have a gentleman in the back. Carl, is someone from Connecticut, youth basketball, high school, mm -hmm. playing college, is there a sense of fulfillment to play here, your final game, in you know, UConn being such a everything here? <clears throat> Sure, I think, you know, this is the mecca of women's basketball. I think um, growing up here, everyone talks about UConn, obviously. I was a Bobcat fan my entire life. So um, being here and playing here was incredible. But I think it was the atmosphere that really made it. I think we had a lot of Quinnipiac supporters. Um, in the Miami game, I think we had a lot of UConn fans cheering for us. But even today, I think we had a good chunk of Quinnipiac fans out there. Um, so it was just an opportunity of a lifetime. Not many people get to play in front of thousands of people. I don't know how many people are here tonight, but that's something that I'm going to remember for the rest of my life. Okay, well, two more questions from the athletes. Gentleman in the back and the gentleman right there. Uh, you know, Paula and Jen, you know, Carly just touched upon it. The atmosphere tonight was awesome. You know, you guys don't really get this. In Hamden, you know, now that your program is validated again, <clears throat> how do you think that can translate to fan engagement back in Hamden? I mean, since I've been here year after year, it's gotten better and better, and I don't expect uh, anything different. So next year, I expect there to be more fans packing our gym, and uh, we look forward to it. Yeah, um, it's always fun when people come out and then your classmates make posters and stuff. Um, and yeah, honestly, it's up to teams. If you want to have those have that fan base, you have to continuously play good. And I hope we have grown so much <laughs> that we're going to have a packed house uh, next year. Carly, they threw uh, Katie Lou on you a few times on or for a lot of the uh, first half on offense, and then they try to switch, put switches on you to cover on defense. But you're able to hold your ground, not for not turn over in the turn turn over in the ball and force. Yeah, I think you forced a turnover too at one point. Mm -hmm. How do you keep your composure when you're facing someone just that's just so much taller than you are? <laughs> Um, I'm used to being the smallest one out on the floor, so that wasn't too different for me. Obviously, um, you know, Katie Lou is 6'3", 6'4", so um, that was a little different, but I just think that we try to utilize the switches as best as possible because if Katie Lou's on me, that means Dangerfield's on one of the other players, so I think we did a pretty good job of isolating either Aaron or Paula or Jen or whoever had the, the better um, matchup. So um, Keeping composure, I just think it comes from, you know, being a senior and um, playing against really good pressure all year. So, um, yeah, I think that's answers that question. <laughs> okay, we'll uh, dismiss the student athletes, congratulate them on a great season. They can go back to the locker room. The Quinnipiac locker room remains open for another 12 minutes or so, and we'll take uh, questions and answers for the, uh, for the coach. We'll, we'll start with Jim right here. Coach, I don't know if anybody – uh, else looked it up. I was late because I was checking. Lowest number of turnovers against a UConn and the lowest number of points all year. Well, we slowed the game down, um, so that would take away possessions. We still had 56 possessions to UConn's 44 with slowing the game down. Um, we don't turn the ball over. That's a hallmark uh, of this program. A few years back when Boo Abshire graduated, she was the assist to turnover ratio leader in all of NCAA. Um, we knew we were going to give ourselves a, ch a chance uh, with shortening the game. So, again, even with shortening the game, 
uh, we had more possessions. We were just a little bit choppy with, again, a lack of a prep and changing our whole offensive style um, to start. So, um, and I do think that we were just, you know, maybe just a little bit rushed uh, when it did come open to get that shot off. So we, we, we were just a little bit quick and not in our complete rhythm offensively. But we handled, we handled the, new, the, the whole first half and how we wanted to go about playing them. Um, could not be, could, you know, couldn't handle it any better. I'll go to the back row and then we'll go with Jim Fuller. Trish, I just simply won't let anyone else ask this question to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you describe the past four years with Carly now that it's officially over? And what did you say to her when she walked off? And how special of a moment was that for you? Uh, I'm so proud, you know, of all our seniors that have graduated because in the last few years they've left the program even better than when they found it, which now as we continue to raise an incredible uh, standard of excellence is hard to do. Um, it was just really almost storybook um, and ending uh, to have with your daughter, um, to have her uh, lead the team into, you know, the Sweet 16. And then again to the, this year with a nine seed to get the win against Miami, to play in front of 8,500 people uh, in a really competitive game. And um, was really excited for her to have this moment um, to close out her career. So it was a lot of fun. And uh, we just hugged and I said, great job. Jim Full in the back and then uh, Jim in the front and then Eric in the back. Uh, Paula hits a three to make it eight, and she had a wide open three, would have made it five. Jen had a wide open three that would have made it. Uh, run me through how important that stretch was when Nurse hits a three. Yeah. Williams gets a couple of foul shots, and all of a sudden it's a it's a huge point swing there. Yeah, yeah. I just thought we were just a little bit tentative, um, you know, uh, with the ball looking for what we were looking, and I'm not sure if that was a little more confusion in the style we were playing. Where we going playing offense? Where we going to hold the ball out? So. Um, that's where I just thought, you know, we just had maybe just a little bit of confusion uh, because we just want to keep pulling uh, even if you miss the shot. So maybe we, we seeded just a little bit of, you know, just some doubt, and that led to some, some missed shots and a big stretch. We got Eric in the way back. Trish, it's a loss, but how will you remember tonight? How, how will you look back at tonight? With a loss. <laughs> um, you, you know, this was the pro to coming to stores when we saw Miami and we saw UConn. Uh, to have an opportunity when you're recruiting and, and you're, you're, you're building a program and to have this moment um, and to have a packed house, to have the electric atmosphere, to have the bands, the feeling, the, the, the everyone crowd, it just packed in an atmosphere. To have that opportunity where it's more rare than common uh, in a big game and for us to handle ourselves so well and compete with the dynasty on their home floor um, I think it's going to settle in. I'll probably answer that question better. But this, this was the pro to being sent up here to Connecticut to see the best, to measure up. And I think we handled ourselves quite well. I'll get the mic to the gentleman in the back there. Uh, Trish, if you're comfortable with it, can you just share a little bit about what you said to your team after the game? Yes, we just, you know, there was... Obviously, we, we don't like to lose, but there was real, real pride in our effort and our compete because we know a lot of teams come in here uh, and in five minutes that game's over and that this was not the case uh, until midway, I think, through the third where they started to open up with a couple of the threes. So, um, and there's still fight to the finish. And we just shared just how proud we are. And I really think this year was our best season we've ever had in, ter in, in our program's history and just was really proud of our effort. We, we executed a game plan in a short, around, short amount of uh, time, and we just left it out on the floor. And it was just how proud we are of what we were able to accomplish all season long uh, and here tonight in, in Connecticut. Ian in the back. Having seen what UConn did on Saturday and then playing them tonight, do you think they're bad for the game? Connecticut? Yes. Absolutely not. If, if, I think it's, I read some great articles and I have to agree. If Gino was not here with UConn, where is women's basketball? I think it's the complete opposite. Um, what he has done to the sport, how he's gone out and built, and then he built that rival, rivalry playing with Tennessee. I mean, if we don't have Gino, we don't have UConn's dominance, dominance who's truly paying attention to the sport? Jody, let me get the mic here real quick. Trish, was it a tough decision 
to try to change your game plan in 36 hours? Uh, it, it was, but again, built on past experiences and being in the NCAA tournament, we decided, to, you know, we elected to go up and down with Oklahoma um, and knowing where UConn is right now, we said, you know, we got to do something else. What's going to give our team the best chance to win? And we firmly believed in shortening that shot clock, taking it down, slowing the game down, shortening that game to give us a, you know, a, a puncher's chance uh, to keep it close and within striking distance. Coach, last sure. year against South Carolina, South Carolina controlled the game from the start. And mm -hmm. this year, you guys definitely hung around in there for at least a half, if not for nearly the most of the game. Yep. Where do you feel your team stacks now against the top programs in the country compared to last year? Um, I just like where we are right now and how we competed. We got that nine seed. We took care of business against Miami. We saw the best um, tonight, and I think we represented ourselves really well. I think we keep making incredible progress in the top 20, and that's where we want to go.